I said, that took forever. I mean, that didn't even start moving until like 6, 6.15, I don't think. Even, no, even later. Seven, it opened up, let's see where did it open, and it's at uh, 12.87 half. So it didn't really start to move until about uh, 7 o'clock. I was sitting there. It was actually lower. And I kept looking at it. And, hmm, interesting. Uh, where's to that? Pax did a hell of a good job with the Cradelli. Very, very, very nice. Thank you, Ira. I appreciate it. Oh, oh, why aren't you working? I am. Yeah. I, I, I'm nice Between. and short. <laughs> no. nice. 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 Very well done. You, 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 you helped me because I get a little cowardly at times and you know you just have to commit to it it's very nice of them oh thanks and it, you know it was just I, did, I i wanted to make sure i don't i don't want to come off i don't want to i wanted to come off uh you know understandable and simple enough to where people understood but i didn't want i didn't want to be too confusing you know i i don't want to sound I, you know what i mean i just want to keep things simple no you do you did it absolutely it was really good i'm telling you it was really good i i learned that. I, it forced me to, you know, because I would get pissed at myself because, you know, <clears throat> the mindset. And see, you, you were actually good for me because there is a value added I bring to this. And I'll do the analysis that, like Anthony searches for, that you search for. You can see the execution side of it, but sometimes there's, there's bigger. And if you give it time, you'll see it develop. But to the... The last 24 hours, is kind of, uh, let's see, uh, it's not 24, but seven, uh, 16 hours or so. Because there are a lot of things, you know, the, the notes were sitting there. Everybody could see what was happening. But, uh, again, I, now, the, now it gets very interesting. And I, the, one of the first things that caught my eye this morning is even the gold vols jumped 2% this morning because they've been sitting on the front month uh, Gold options have been at about seven and a half, uh, seven point six, and they jumped over nine twenty, nine thirty early this morning, even when the gold wasn't moving. And that was kind of interesting. So there's a lot of people again short vol because last week and Friday solidified it. They sucked mm-hmm. them all in again. Oh yeah, and, and I'm not talking about longs or shorts. I'm just talking about premium sellers. You know, everybody's in insurance agency right now, you know, as we talked about, almost like they were mortgages and they're all selling vowel because again, uh, they've been told by the Fed that no problem on. So uh, no problem it is. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, now you got a little bit of a problem. Uh, and I don't know whether you're doing, uh, I've seen some gold charts, some point and figure charts that start to look interesting here. Uh, but you actually, this is the first morning where New York was a buyer or uh, America was a buyer because there's been a seller of gold every day, Chicago time between 7 a.m. and 7.20, regardless of whether the gold's been higher or lower, doesn't matter. If the gold is $10 or higher in Europe, somebody comes in and sells it. So I don't see what happens today. Uh, I don't know who that somebody is and it's not conspiratorial. That's just a fact. You can look at the charts. I'm not the uh, the data will support it. You can look at an hourly chart or whatever, 10 minutes for those days, every day. Today, it didn't, didn't occur. I think somebody got a little spooked. There's, there's a lot of, again, a lot of things going on in this world. And we're not even talking about Europe because, you know, even the Euro gets a bid. Uh, um, and again, what, what, the yen staggered all night until... Uh, almost with the gold, it, it rallied earlier, but you know the end should have had a, a nice rally last night based on a you know a risk on risk off uh, scenario, which was certainly developing, but staggered did nothing, did nothing, uh, which makes the whole board phenomenally interesting. And all the euro crosses, the euro strong against everything. Uh, well, not against the Swiss is strong against everything. Euro yeah. yen is down. Yeah, you know, against the ones that you would expect to be a little nervous. The Aussie's really weak. Uh, 
which is more statement, of course, about China. The equities, of course, are weak. And now that we took out that 28-26 area, and we'll see what happens. I'm sure we'll get uh, some announcement. But I, I think the finishing touch was Cudlow on uh, – I, I I only saw it on uh, uh, on tape, but that was that was pathetic. I mean, it, uh, what's his name, Chris, uh, who I, was actually a good journalist, really just took him to task, and Cudlow had no answer. It was kind of I, I felt bad, I, and I'm not a Cudlow fan, but I, I felt bad. He was really caught in the crosshairs, and he was still uncovered. He couldn't look at the camera, and he couldn't look at the. Uh, What's his name? Chris, uh, who was doing the interview, and, uh, could not look at him because he knew he was, you know, just full nonsense. It's a tax on the American people. So, yeah. It's a, yeah. Here, yeah. Here, here's Aussie Yen on the monthly IRA. I've got it up. And now we're last night's, uh, last night's high was uh, mm-hmm. that close on, uh, on that uh, flash crash. Uh, let me go. Oh, yeah. yeah those, and that's January 3rd date. That's really. Uh, Yep, here we go. Uh, yeah, 76.08, yeah. And we're trading the, uh, what, what was that? Uh, the high that night was 76.08, so we're back, back into that. Let's see what that low is. Uh, it closed at 75.41. So we got a little work to do, but we could, uh, it'll be interesting to get down there. The board is definitely, and, and again, no discussion about the Mideast or, you know, of course, uh, some action, what took place, nobody's really certain. Uh, uh, as I thought about, I said, well, what is this, another golf of Tonkin situation? Uh, Judd, you're right on target with the beans. Tomorrow's expiration, let's see what happens there. Uh, they're, 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 they're crushing the farmer. And you know what? And the Chinese are playing that so well. Remember, they took out ads out back in, during the uh, congressional elections in October you know, talking about, you know, the um, the tariffs and how it was negatively affecting. I mean, that's the Chinese uh, people, uh, government, whatever, taking out the ads in Iowa newspapers and uh, Missouri, Illinois, pa- uh, rural papers. And they had an impact on the on the congressional elections. Will it have an impact on the presidential election? Too early to tell, but they've certainly, this is just stupid. And this is what, it's not the prices are going down. It's the same thing of Jimmy Carter, that the American farmers have done yeoman's work building up their presence in the Chinese market. And these tariffs are, are destroying all the work that they've done because they're forcing China, you know, into, and, and yes, you know, somebody else will buy the grain eventually, but it's not the same. You know, you become a dependable supplier, you've got business. And I know the answer is not easy, but there are repercussions, and, and they're significant for the uh, for the uh, rural rural sector of America. So, uh, again, not everything gets thought all the way through. Um, well, there's no thought process involved in it. No, yeah, <laughs> that's no, the problem. No, 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 no thought process. Well, you know what? Well, that's not with Lighthizer. There certainly is, but. They don't all get on the same pages, you know, and of course, uh, Trump, you know, uh, so many times uh, sends out messages before he's thought them through. I, I, it's so, it, so it appears. Again, not a political statement, just a fact. Uh, we can go look at these and you can see them and go, yeah, this is kind of... Well, and you don't know who's really, tweeting it out because he's got a team of four guys uh, tweeting. Yeah, that's what we don't know. You know, that would be an interesting uh, media story because it's not him. To, I, I don't believe it. You know, I think he calls him out, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, well, so. I was told he only writes the real vile ones. Oh, okay. I, you know, I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I've often wondered, but uh, who, because whoever gets him first is probably trading their own account. That's always been my case anyway. That's what's pissed me off because it's not like, you know, this isn't done in a vacuum. Hey, Ira, I wondered, I wondered uh, what you thought the, uh, uh, the chances of a VIX short squeeze going to happen. I see it's taken out a taken out. It's a 200 week. day right now. Yeah, it took out last week's yeah. price now. Or it's going to try to. 
Yeah, you know what? It's interesting. And it's all, again, it's only part of the puzzle because it's just vowels short across the board. And yeah, you wonder when the margin calls are going to start. You know, there is going to be a margin call because these guys have just had it their way. And Friday has to be a killer again, as Judd, you know, as we, and we talked on Friday morning. And it's, they will be in, and they were, and they were rewarded until they're not rewarded. So it's a very good question, um, and it bears very close watching. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. It well, bears very close watching. Now you have a technical model that's broken, and it's going to take oh, yeah. weeks or a month or more to repair it. It's just yeah. not going to be it, an overnight deal. And, and if I'm right about, and, and I'm not, I got time, but if I'm right about what makes the Fed mo the most nervous, it's these huge uh, short vowel positions. They know it. They know that there's a, a huge, huge positions, huge. And again, it's just not, it, it, people don't understand. It's, Somebody's on the other side of this, and a lot of times it's the prime brokers in the bank market. And these, and you know what? The, one of the things that the banks do with the prime broker is, yes, I know the Volcker rule exists, but these banks, there's still several of them still taking um, speculative risk. So when they see big clients who are right, they're not. It's not the old days. They jump in with them. So there's a lot of people who tail coat these, as well as all these trading rooms. These high frequency rooms that are set up with uh, uh, not just to trade trade fast, but a lot of you know mimic the trade too. So they wind up selling the shit out of vowel. So you have all these short vowel positions that are staring each other in the face because again, you haven't been rewarded for being long vowel. So and and, and people actually boast about it how you know how they've smashed the vowel buyers. They, they they boast about it. Oh, you know, you're getting killed, getting killed, until they don't. Uh, so, I and I and are the the people short vow? Are they the ones taking protection now by selling the S and P's? You know, you got to find protection wherever you can find protection, and you'll find a they're correlating this all in real time as it goes on. You know, to find out where the best place to buy. You know, to take some protection to because these. These are monstrous positions. I can't stress that enough. How big? I don't know, but they're monstrous because all you do is have to look at the low vowels across the board to understand that. So you have the Ray Dalios of the world. No matter what he says, the risk parity trade is a low vowel proposition, and everybody mimics them. You've got uh, you know all those huge uh, hedge funds in Europe. Uh, as well as a lot of banks who are coattailing Dalios because it's been a successful uh, trade. Uh, so let's see. Let's see where we just don't know, uh, as Woody Allen would say in his movie, where's the break point? I don't know where the break point is. But... We'll take a look at a monthly Apple chart, Ira. Okay, let me put it up. I will. Because that's the breaking point right there for the whole market. Oh, yeah. Again, it kind of mimics the S&Ps that ran up, and as good as it was, they could never make a new high. They didn't even get close to the high. Uh, <coughs> yeah. So that's that's a big closing thing here over the next couple of weeks. It's just mm. uh, 188.36. Uh, yeah. Oh, 38. Because <clears throat> yeah, if they start fine. forcing people out of here, it, it will get ugly because everybody's yeah. high. And again, it's uh, we haven't heard from uh, some of the uh, players out there in a while. So let's see what uh, who steps up to the uh, to the plate. Uh, the Fed Fed has been very cool. Uh, uh, Clear just spoke this morning. I don't know what he said. I didn't see the speech. I don't know what he's got to say anyway. Yeah, we just um, came down to a big hole level again. And um, yeah, yeah, I know the twelve to sixteen area. Yeah, in the S and P. Yeah. yeah. I had my I, just in the S and P. I had my targets in at at um, twelve to fourteen or eleven to fourteen. Yeah. Had everybody in my room put in their bids before the number, so most got filled mm -hmm. at 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 fourteen. Ira, of course, my bids are you know at thirteen. I got nothing. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
they're not, not going to make it easy on us, at least in this. I think it, they're not going to make it easy on the shorts in this area. Oh, no. It's a it's uh, big screw zone. Yeah, there's a new – right now that article just came out on Bloomberg. Uh, EU is ready to retaliate as Trump auto tariff deadline nears. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, yeah, it's just what the market, that's what the market needs. Uh, okay, uh, but the uh, pack's a nice, that was really a good piece. People should really watch it and take away what uh, the wisdom you give them there. Well, I got that wisdom, <laughs> you know, Jud, Jud, as I said it last night, you know, partially edited, by the way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, Jud, no, I, I know <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I don't know if you saw Anthony's face, but anyway, Judd, um, uh, it's uh, I learned how to trade from Judd. You know, the opening range trade isn't anything new. It's it, you guys did it, no, and, no, and, no. and continue yeah. to do it. And and it's you know it's something that that needs people need to people need to have a simple, reliable, repeatable method and process in order to be able to 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 execute their trades from. And I don't care if it's a euros the 10 year 30 year or the equities it's the same anywhere anywhere people like yeah. to complicate things and they want to sound smart while they're executing their trades and they don't have to you know you guys are the smart ones you know what yeah the problem is and you and you delineated it really well last night whether you realize it or not you know but you you made the case don't follow the high frequency don't follow the algo let them do the work. And that's what we all need to learn. The pro here, we, we do have a momentum trade right now in the S&Ps. And, sure. and it's been a classic because the rally on a Friday, which of course, you know, the, I'm coming up. I'm good. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll right, come the back boss, to you. Hold the on. boss is calling. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's uh, funny. Okay. I was talking to a, a trading room. Come on, you want to ask something? Uh, Pax, what you did was really good because a lot of people just try to trade with these alg algos and high free, and, and you just can't. That's why you have to do so much preparation to get this done right. Uh, and you make that point and you, the fact that people should be prepared and have a game plan because you cannot race these people. You can't, and, and you have to utilize what they're going to do, which is basically bring certain market levels to you to take advantage of. And you, you, if you're prepared to do that, it, it's a really good thing. And I, and I think in listening to you and uh, Anthony last night, it's such a great takeaway to have that. So uh, you're to be applauded because there's not enough people out there talking. You know, everybody comes across, they have these great big ideas, you know, and you're going to jump with these guys. No, let them do what they want to do. Uh, and then, but just make sure your work is done. It, and then again, as you say, you execute, but then put a view to it, and it really becomes a powerful uh, factor. Yeah, the, the one thing, Ira, that we've been going over are these OR, ORH and ORL patterns, where you can see where the stops are building up, and the algorithms just go for them, and then that's going to run the next price action. Yeah, you know, Judd, that's that's right, and I don't, and I think if you and especially your listeners, because you do a lot of technical work, there is nothing that that's done out there that these algos and and um, that the algorithms can't deconstruct. You know, I, and I, I'm a I'm a big fan of Dennis Gartman as a thinker. Not as necessarily as a trader, but I think Dennis has always been a great thinker. He really sees the world. But I think when he started putting his trades out there and, you know, in the, and his methodology, sometimes I think it worked against him because there was a lot of, he had such a large following. And it wasn't just who followed. It just wasn't that he had numbers follow him. It was, you know, he was instrumental in a lot of bank trading unions and a lot of family wealth offices. And I think that there were, algorithms 
who deconstructed his methodology and that they would attack his stop level. Hey, I don't know that. I don't know that factually. That's just a sense that I got when he was struggling. Of course, and Zero Hedge was 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 really uh, nasty, you know, because they love to see anybody who's on top, you know, get knocked down. But I think that you know, in today's world, these algorithms are so easily programmable to destruct anybody's trade. Absolutely. They, they know where our stops are. They, they know, you know, the, the algos have all of the human emotion designed into it. They know where the, the average retail trader stops are. They know where the, the average institutional investor or trader stops are. You know, the bigger traders with the bigger money behind them. They're going to run them as much as they possibly can. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's frustrated guys like Tudor. And these are, these are people who are great traders. I, I, listen, I, great traders. Uh, even Druckenmiller, who's, uh, I think, him and Kovner, I think, are in, in my realm of foreign currency growing up, uh, certainly were the, were the premier, as well as, you know, all through the junk. But even they've been frustrated. Uh, so they go back and forth, oh, do I want to use this? So they invoke more artificial intelligence, but it doesn't allow them really to pan out their ideas because then they just become uh, trading factories, which that's not what works for them. And um, I, I think, you know, and I'm in that camp. I'm certainly not in any kind of in size, shape or form in, in size, but you know, my thought processes are, tend to run very similar and I'm having to reconstruct myself every day because I'm trying, you know, because I could see what I see but a matter, you know, and of executing, and that's where Pax, I thought, you know, you were you were really helpful. In fact, you, you don't even know it how much you helped me this morning because, you know, I was uh, especially with my my view on the gold Swiss and how I put it together, and then was able to jump on it where I was, you know, kind of sitting. But it it made me rethink. I, I listened to you twice last night, so uh, after Anthony sent it to me, so yeah. I, I want to thank you, at the, you know, at the same time. Uh, so, you know, because it makes even an experienced trader like me, and I've been doing this since like, I think today's my 42nd anniversary. It's close uh, of, of actually being on the floor and, and being in the trading realm. Uh, so it's very, uh, very important. So, you know what, when the, when the, when the teachers become, come to students, it's a very great day in the world. And uh, you know, we thank you for that. Jeez, Ira, thank you. That was uh, coming from you. When Judd, when Judd turned last night and, and, and texted me and said that was great, that meant the world to me. And, and <coughs> just what, what you just said, this is my first time ever doing anything like this. So yeah. what you just said that was so kind and, 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 and so important to me. So thank you very, very much. You, you, you know, I mean, I, I've, I, I've said things, I've asked you questions for the last 20 years. Every time I would see you, I couldn't wait to talk to you. And, and, you know, e even at Jordan's uh, film, the premiere of the film, you know, we kind of hid together. For a few right. Minutes. right. But yeah, it, was, well, it was hard. Believe me. And I have, and I have dinner with Leo. I just had dinner with him last, uh, last Tuesday night. How's he doing? Uh, uh, anyway, we'll we'll talk about that later. But yeah, he, yeah. Uh, it was just it, it just means a lot coming from you because you I I learn so much from you all the time, constantly. And if I don't understand something, and I tell it, I tell the people I talk to all the time that if I don't understand something that you're talking about, I, I go ahead and I research it. I've been reading the South Morning, uh, the South China Morning Post almost every morning. Um, and so I was going to ask you, the Asian version or the the U.S. version? Do you read? I, well, I get it electronically because I signed up for it. So it's the Asian, ver you know, let's see. It's the Asian version because it comes earlier than the U.S. version. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and again, it, I know that there's a lot of crap in there. But they do give you a, and some of the people who write for there are really pretty good. It, uh, it took me a while to filter through it because I've been such an FT uh, absorber for uh, really close to 40 years. I've had it delivered on my doorstep, although in Arizona, you cannot buy the physical hard copy paper here in Arizona. <laughs> cannot, cannot, cannot. That's two, crazy. Two years, two years ago, I was getting it delivered daily, 
And then all of a sudden it stopped coming. I, I call up, I go, oh, yeah, you, you know, we discontinued it. You can only get it online. I said, what? I said, I paid for it for three years forward already. Nobody tells me. I'm going a month. And they, I said, well, I'll just go buy it at the, um, where I usually buy it then. Because if we didn't get delivered, they said, oh, no, you're not going to find it there. <laughs> they said, you cannot buy a hard copy in certain states. End of story. Get on. I said, oh, that's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful. I don't, I don't know. I said, I don't know who's running the show there. Although I actually met with the marketing guy in Chicago. We had breakfast in Sirius because somebody brought him to me for a different reason. Uh, trying to promote me with the FD and uh, they wanted to talk to me and I, I, I told them right first straight forward I said you know it's very hard for me to sit with you guys because uh, I don't have much respect for the way you're running, <laughs> running <laughs> that uh, you know and he looked at me and says what do you mean and I told him he says really are we really doing that I said yeah it's a good thing you know that it's headed to marketing for North America Stupid. Yeah, really well, it's, it's like it's like reading a you know, it's like a soap opera. The whole, the whole basis of that paper was oh, I'm sorry, I'll call it pink, but they'll call it salmon colored. Was that everybody would see it and know it? I mean, that was like that was for 160 years that paper was that color, and that yeah. was like the you know one of their uh, big things and. You don't get that online. You know, you, you lose that panache, uh, whatever. I know, everybody knows that. But I always like reading hard copy because a lot of times when I read stuff online, I miss stuff. Whereas if I go through it physically, okay, you know, I, I'll, I'll skim that. I'll, uh, when Judd and I, when uh, I started, when Judd started mentoring me back in 98, when, when we started working together, the, the the one thing that he told me to do was to 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 get the Financial Times. I I, I had clerked in the Euros for ten years. I never heard of the Financial Times. I knew about the sports <laughs> section. <laughs> I mean, really, I, 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 I knew I the know. sports writer. I knew Bill Bill Gleason from the sports writers real well, but I didn't know any of the writers from the Financial Times. But I I did, and we would we I, I was bartending six nights a week, and I would meet Judd every morning at six. And before I met him, I had to read the whole. The, the whole or as much of the papers I could, you know, obviously from front to cover. And I would ask him, Judd, what part do you really want me to read? Read the whole thing from from cover to back. And I did. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and, yeah. Um, and that's how I learned how to yeah. that's how I learned how to recognize order flow. That's how I learned how to or capital flow. Yeah, and that's right. And, and I, I tell you who else I talked to about that. He, he we we text back and forth. I don't know if you know you know Bob Sanusky. Oh yeah, sure. Who, who was the uh, <laughs> doorman at the Tremont Hotel? Who was yeah. the SMP thing? He yeah, was down the floor because he's a blog reader. Yeah, but, so Bobby and I laughed about certain things, you know, about what people never pay attention to because it's amazing. You know, it's like, <laughs> I, what, there's a technician who I know who will go and mention, but I was so adamant about this stuff. And he had a client who was the biggest bond trader in the pit. And he had to tell him what it meant when the CPI was coming out, why it was important. <laughs> and I kid you not. That's a true story. Oh true story. Lord. It's unbelievable, isn't it? It, it? it really is. But it got to the point, Judd, it, it got to the point where Judd would sometimes beat me over the head with the he, he, he did. He took the paper and beat me over the head with it one time. But I did learn. I actually, I would actually be able to hold a, 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 a a knowledgeable, relatively knowledgeable uh, conversation about what the PPI meant to the market at that time, you know, because I, because I did my homework as instructed. Well, you know, I got that from Ira when we used to, I used to walk by his office and he'd be in there giggling and I'd say, well, what are you laughing about? He said, well, I know which way all the currency crosses are going today from the bond offerings and the tombstones in the journal. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. But see, and, and people would say, well, why do you want, I mean, see, my, my premise was I always had to know what the market was thinking so you know how to react when the market reacts. You, yes. you just can't have a reaction function if you don't know. So if the consensus calls for a, uh, well, when, when the trade number used to be the premier uh, piece of data for currency traders, if they were looking for an $11 billion deficit and it came in at eight, you had to know that. 
because, well, that, was that really going to change the trend? Well, let's see. So if the market had a huge, you know, uh, let's say uh, they viewed it as better for the dollar, so the market would have sold off. But if you don't know what the market's looking at, or then you're you're being acted upon, and you have really no reaction function. You're just standing there like a deer in the headlights. And and I could never tolerate myself being there. That's why today I put so much effort into always knowing about the unemployment data. Uh, and again, it's important for the talking heads on television, but it is becoming a diminishing number because the data, the Fed says it's data dependent, but the market's, you know, saying you're full of shit. No, you're not. You know, there's m many other things at stake here. And that's what you, so don't tell me you're data dependent. So now we've reduced it. So if all they're looking for is the average hourly earnings, because they're trying to measure wage inflation, which is becoming diminished, diminishing too, but it's still the, the main uh, criteria of it. You have to know that. How do you know how to react? So if you get, you know, if you get a correction, because everybody's one way, and you go, well, that number's not so far away from consensus. I'm going to do. I'm going to buy it here. A classic was the other night with the with, with the Aussie Kiwi. Uh, the night when when New Zealand cut their cut their interest rate. Now, the consensus called for no change, but I had read a, a shitload of stuff. I said, wait a minute. There's a high probability that they're going to cut here. So when the first, I, and I didn't think it was out of the ordinary. And the first response was that they crushed the Kiwi. Well, that's when you want to be prepared. That's a classic case when you're prepared. Because then you could have put on the Aussie Kiwi cross and you would, you know, because nothing had really changed. Yes, they cut the rates, but it wasn't that far out of the ordinary if you paid attention to what was being said. And lo and behold, you could have, you really got a nice level to put that cross on it. And it's, uh, and that was the high. If you look on that sixty-minute chart, that was the high. So yeah, those are those are those are important things to know. Then you can take advantage of those opportunities. See, and that's and when I'm trading well, that's when I'm trading well because that's not me telling the market what to think. That's me reacting to the fact that it's already made its decision, and now I'm just a value trader. And, that, and that's a big difference. That's a huge difference. So that's where that's where it lies, and and that's uh, where I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off. But I just I really wanted to say uh, first of all, there's so much going on. <laughs> you know, people better pay attention. And again, there's just a Bloomberg article that came out while we're sitting here. It literally came out uh, five, ten, fifteen minutes ago about Europe already putting together a list of how they're going to react if, in case uh, Trump goes on uh, auto tariffs on Friday, because that's out there, too. Okay. Well, Ira, okay, thanks. So, yeah, yeah. So I didn't really offer much, but uh, we'll, we'll keep talking because uh, you know, the stage is just getting set for some increased uh, volatility, increased trading uh, potential that's what you're really interested in yeah that's and true. all 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 of uh, industrial names you know, they all had those patterns where it looked like there was you know the thing to do on friday and now everybody's underwater on that too so. yeah and you know and i'm watching these uh because because again what's going to be the reaction here is somebody going to blink and how do they blink and is the fed going to wake up and go uh oh you know what maybe we've been wrong about the uh Remember what the word is. Uh, what, what, uh, uh, you know what they call it, transitory. Maybe this the negative impact from the tariffs is not transitory, and that this is going to in, invoke a, a greater economic slowdown faster. If you go to the if you go to the blog, there's been uh, Mike Temple has been there's. A lot of on, on the last blog I wrote uh, from I think was it Friday or Thursday or uh, whatever yeah uh, Thursday I think there was a, there's been a lot of discussion and there's discussions about people actually looking for rate cuts in June I'm not one who's looking for that I think it's too quick but pay attention to these yield curves here because it's you know we've had a nice move uh, and glad, at least I caught this um, in the the two the two ten has popped from. 
16, 17 basis points to we're almost out to 22 this morning. So that's where some of this stuff is showing up because it's going to be the front end. I don't want to buy a long end here. And, and you can see the long end goes grudgingly up now, even when the S&Ps are getting hammered. And Judd, before I leave, that S&P bond chart, you know how much I love that chart because it's caught so much. Uh, is really, you know, it's, it, it's been a, a, a huge move this month yeah. on the down. So, uh, uh, the one that interests me is the NASDAQ bonds, Ira, because it came down. Yeah, I, I know you filled, were it, it filled a gap from, uh, yeah. from uh, um, the quarterly blast off. And now we're back uh, under 50 in the spread and back under the 200 day. So I have to go mm -hmm. neutral all my models just on that because every time we've gotten to 50, we've gotten uh, these 700 point swings in the NASDAQ itself. So there's no way yeah. you can long stocks here. I mean, it, you right. know, trade them back and forth, but that's what it's going to be. It's, it's going to be a trade. At yeah, least you know, and. Uh, yeah, well, everything is only a trade because, because again, you have so many, so many different players trying to do so many different things, and everybody's chasing again an extra two, three, four uh, percent, and taking on a hell of a lot of risk to do it. You know, again, that's the point. Yes. There's no getting around. There's no getting around it. That's what people are doing. That's what the market is doing. You just that's the world in which you know is uh, what's, what's his name? Hyman Ross says to Michael Corleone, "That's the world we've chosen." <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. I'll talk to you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Ira. I was muted. I'm sorry.